Hello no, no, everybody, uh, we're back. Uh, welcome back. How was your weekend? How was your, how was your Labor Day weekend? Uh, mine was boring, it was too long. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of holidays because I live by myself and it's not fun to be alone by myself. So I'm not a huge fan of any holidays. As a single guy, you know, no biggie. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so yeah, yesterday we kind of uh, witnessed, observed the power of humanology, where with a single concept we can we, we were able to explain so many different things. Okay, that's the goal of humanology. Okay, and uh, we we did it. We achieved it yesterday. Okay, so congratulations. Let's appreciate that, okay? Our achievement is you and me, okay? I'm not doing this by myself. Um, of course, you don't exist now, but probably in the future. Okay. Um, but at least I assume your existence. So in a way, you're helping me out. You know, as a, as a, a sounding board, you know, Bouncing ideas, okay. <clears throat> Resonation board, whatever, right? Okay, so today we will talk about um, there are many things I wanted to talk about today. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, ideological pollution or association or absorption okay okay so pollution let's have some agenda here okay before we forget <coughs> okay pollution and then we have subjectivity versus objectivity okay how Objectivity changes, okay? <clears throat> it's been a while, been a while since we did any mathematics, so let's do the subjectivity versus objectivity, okay? We'll talk about also uh, mathematics a little bit. Let's talk about mathematics. Let's talk about like... Uh, Say uh, what's the truth? Okay. <clears throat> so Jesus said, uh, "I am the truth, the way, and the life." Uh, the way I interpret it is this: uh, He is the way to the truth that leads to happiness. The way, Jesus is the way to the truth that leads to life, okay? That's one way to just combine all those three things together. Life, do you have life? Does that, what does that mean in a, a vernacular, secular way? It means you are happy, right? I don't have life, that means I'm unhappy. That kind of stuff. Typically it means like, do you have a life, meaning, uh, do you have a date? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have family? That kind of stuff. Do you have a weekend hobby? No, you know. If I say I have no life, meaning I work and work and work and I'm not happy. Right? That's how it's typically meant by life, the term life. And we can use that vernacular, secular language to interpret Bible. When Jesus said, I am the life, that means I'm the, you have to believe me, Jesus. That's the only way you can be happy. Or Jesus said, uh, those who are willing to die will get life. And those who are, who struggle to live and do the wrong thing, then that person will lose life. We can interpret it that way okay if you follow jesus then you'll be happy 
meaning you have a, you will have a life and if you think following Jesus's teaching would be would make you unhappy so you don't follow his teaching then you lose life meaning uh, you'll be unhappy okay because life equals happiness in this interpretation okay I'm not trying to proselytize you with uh, Christianity. No, that's not my point. My point is um, Bible is whether you're Christian or not, you probably are, you're very familiar with Bible, okay? Like David and Goliath, and, because Bible is such takes such huge part. It's a huge part of Western civilization, like it or not right so yeah western civilization is <clears throat> big part of that <laughs> western civilization is just this science plus religion half of western civilization is about christianity and the other half of our science okay that's western or oh, any modern westernized culture whether you like it or not so you should be, you probably even if you're not Christian you probably are very very familiar with uh, this Christian knowledge and let's take advantage of that knowledge that most people are very familiar with all right let's not think in terms of what's right and wrong let's just take advantage of what we already know okay to understand things okay I'm not saying Bible is correct or right that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is that uh, it's something you already know so let's take advantage of that it's like a common language between you and me okay that's all it is that's what I'm saying because many times I doubt sometimes I do doubt whether Bible is correct or not whenever I lose my job I guess or whenever I, I feel very bad about my life, whenever I'm unhappy. Yeah, I have my doubts. And, um, so let's say as easy as uh, one, because human knowledge is very humble, okay? We don't deal with this all this fancy mathematical, physical equation. No, no, no. We are at the very beginning point. So we deal with very basic mathematics, like arithmetic, arithmetic, like add, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. That's all we deal with now. Later on, maybe you can come up with some fancy equation, but that will be the next generation human knowledge. This is very first very beginning of human knowledge okay so um like one plus two equals three okay one plus two equals three is this the truth is this a truth what is this is this subjective truth objective truth what is this i give you like 10 seconds okay because i i gotta pour more vodka in my uh, rose hips this it tastes so good. I, I pick some rose hips from my backyard. I live in Alaska, you know, so we have wild rose. The rose hips everywhere, and nobody planted it. It's just there. Okay. Ah, oh, rose hips, vodka, fantastic. I love this. It kind of tastes like persimmon. The texture is similar, and color is similar too. If you if you know what persimmon is, fantastic fruit. It's more common in Asia, persimmon. All right. So what is this? Is truth? Is it opinion? What is this? If you ask me, neither. Is what is this then? Uh, it's an agreement. It's a language. Like in English, we call apple uh, apple. In Korean, we call the word for apple is sagwa. In um, Spanish, is manzana. Uh, French, boom. That's all I know. Okay. So we call uh, 
<clears throat> this object apple in Spanish they call it manzana is that the truth or is it a fact is it an opinion no 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 that it's an agreement between people in Mexico or in Spain they just agreed to call this object this apple manzana all right it's an agreement it's not has nothing to do with truth or fact no it's a, it's just a random arbitrary agreement so with this mathematical language this one two is the arabic number system right and you have this symbol of addition and symbol of equality okay it's an agreement it expresses uh, this idea in our language that's what it is okay now the mathematics is a language okay this you have one apple two apple you put together you have three apples right or you have one one pencil two pens okay one chopstick two chopsticks three chopsticks so or you can have one son or one okay one boy two boys put together you can three boys right so in a way uh mathematics is a very very higher level concept because you have this so many different individual instances it could be apple one apple two apple one chopstick two chopstick one boy two boys but it doesn't matter what it is that you are counting okay so that's the power of mathematics okay that's why mathematics has huge application and that's why you have to learn mathematics okay no matter what you're gonna do in 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 your life why do you know why because let's say uh john lennon okay he probably doesn't know much mathematics right so he ended up dying very early right jim morrison or kurt cobain all those people elvis presley marilyn monroe they all died michael jackson they all died young right why? Because they are uneducated people. Yeah, they are educated in music, but how long do you think it lasts? I mean, you get fed up. After decades, after three decades, you probably will be really fed up with all this music. So you, you probably will want to want to do something different, okay? And um, children... Um, <clears throat> I have a heavy accent, English, when I speak English, or any other languages, but I have no accent in Korean, when I speak Korean, okay, and I speak Korean only when I talk to my family member in Korea. Why? Because, yeah, I, I love Korean Americans, my fellow Korean Amer or Americans, yeah, they're fantastic, mostly. Just like good cops, bad cops. Yeah, there's a bad Korean Americans. Yeah, I've, I've, I've met them. Okay, so don't think all Koreans are nice because they are not. Okay, they are just like anyone else. Okay. Yeah, don't think they are nice and smart just like I am. Okay. <laughs> they are good Koreans, bad Koreans. Okay. Don't think every Korean is nice just like I am just because I'm Korean American. Okay. Anyways, so, um, <clears throat> why are we talking about Koreans, man? Um, so, uh, yeah, man, what, what mathematics is, is, is an abstraction, okay? Just like you have substance and you have form, different forms. The concept of one can manifest as one apple or one chopstick or one boy, okay? It's the concept of number, all right? Now,
Let's make into some kind of uh, equation. One plus x equals three. Then x equals three minus one, two, right? Is this truth or is this truth of is or is this an opinion or is it some what is it or is it an agreement? I'll give you like five seconds. Now it becomes it's, it's, a, it's a truth, right? It's the truth. Why? Because you can have many wrong answers, but you have only one single answer. You may say, okay, you are you are a elementary schooler who is learning this equation first on the fourth order, fourth algebraic equation of fourth order, right? You may get it wrong. You may get the answer wrong. Maybe x is two, or maybe x is two point five. Maybe x is three, five. Maybe x is one hundred. But there is only one answer. You can have infinity, infinite number of wrong answers. But there is only one right answer. Okay. What would be a good analogy of this? So we are talking about more physical level. What is metaphysical analog of this? Maybe you know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to ask you anyway. I'll give you like five seconds. X, is X1? Eh. Is X3? Eh. Is X4? Eh. Is X5? Six? Eh. No, there's only one answer, okay? One right answer. Is it L? No. Is it G? Eh. Is it T? Eh. Is it Q? Eh. No, 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 no. There is only one right way of having sex. One man, one woman. That's it. How about uh, one man and uh, another man? No. How about one woman and another woman? No. How about uh, uh, one man and having sex with... One day he want to have sex with a guy, the other day have sex with a woman. How about that? No, no, no. How about... LGBT. How about uh, I, I so I was born a man, but how? What if I I, I become a woman? No, nah, no, no. Okay, LGBT. They are all bullshit. All all wrong. Okay, wrong answers. They are, and they they keep increasing, right? LGBTQI or and what what is Q? Bullshit. It means nothing. It's either you're gay, you're bisexual, you're transgender, you're lesbian. That's it. There's no, no nothing else. Okay. Oh, I'm asexual. I'm not sexual at all. Oh, come on. Okay. It's it's not science, but it's 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 not, it's not an, even an opinion. It's a lie. It's a self delusion. You're believing. You, you think you are gay, but nobody is gay. Okay, everybody is straight. Why? Because we are bio biological human beings. We are homo sapiens. We are biological species. There is no such a thing as gay. Okay. It is just this devil created by God. God created devil. Then devil, God made people be fooled and deceived by the devil. That's God's work. Okay, so humanology is not Christianity. Christianity never talked about this. Yeah, there is po some obscure verse in in uh is the book of isaiah isaiah i don't even know how to pronounce it okay isaiah the big prophet right yeah god it's in book of isaiah god says yeah i created all the goods and all the evils and both good and the evil yeah i created them all okay but no pastors no preachers they talk about that verse at all and uh because it's not flattering, okay? It can, it puts God in a bad light. And what does people do in church? They worship 
God, they praise God, they sing for God, they pray to God. So they cannot talk, they cannot badmouth God that they worship. Humanology is not all about religion. It's half science, half logic. The other half, religion. Okay? The humanology is not 100% religion. It's only 50% religion. Maybe 51% religion. But So yeah, we talk shit about God, okay? <laughs> In humanology. Because uh, it's the truth. If God didn't create devil, then who created devil? You may ask, who created God? Well, who says God needs to be created? What if he is transcendental to the concept of uh, creation? What if God created the concept of creation itself? Right? So it, those are uh, these are conceptual possibilities, right? And um, the devil, yeah, yeah, of course God created the devil. Didn't he create snake and we are talking in biblical language, Bible language, okay? So in book of Genesis, okay, let's follow the logic, okay? So God created the snake and God created snake and snake tempted Eve and uh, God is all-knowing and all-powerful. So God knows the future according to Jesus, right? God is the only one who knows the future then he probably knew that snake would tempt Eve, right? Yeah, but he let it happen. He not only let it happen, he actually made it happen. He implanted this idea of temptation in the mind of the snake. He made snake tempt Eve. He made Eve given to the temptation of the snake. God is the single author of the history of the universe, okay, according to humanology. All right. I mean, who else created evil then? Of course it's God. <laughs> God is the single only creator. Do you think devil can create anything? Do you, can, do you think human can create anything? No, no, it's all God, okay. God is the only creator, period. If you believe in Bible, okay, so. Anyway. But don't get me wrong, I love Christianity, I love churches, I love pastors, preachers, many of them are my friends, okay, so. I, may, many of my friends are tattooed, pierced, they smoke marijuana, okay, it doesn't matter, okay, why, husband and wife, they, fight all the time, they disagree all the time, right? But they are still husband and wife. They still love each other. So you don't have to agree with every single thing with your friend. That's just not possible. Unless you are a liar, unless you have no backbone. Just don't talk about it. Talk about that in front of them, okay? But it's good that nobody's watching this because I'm talking shit about a lot of things that, that people like, so. Yeah, so. LGBTQ, no matter how many things they come up with, that is not heter monogamous heterosexuality. All wrong. Again, again, infinite ways of things that can go wrong. Wrong answers, they're infinite ways, they, but there is only one single answer. Okay. Yeah, what if there is second order equation? Then you have two correct answers. Yeah, sure. Nth order equation, yeah, you have n, n correct e answers, right? Like, uh, okay. Just to, for the sake of argument, x equals, it could be plus one or minus one, right? Okay, then uh, how about LGBT? What well, maybe life is like force order equation and what is it? Uh, X equal plus minus one uh, plus minus I. 
imaginary number like i squared equals minus one you know right so uh Maybe it's okay to be LGBT and not anymore. <sighs> right? You can make that argument, okay? Yeah, yeah, you can make that argument, okay? So, so yeah, yeah it, this kind of analogy has its limits, okay? But uh, the thing is, um, nobody in LGBT community believes LGBT is the the four LGBT is the only right way. No, they believe in everything. LGBTQI, blah, 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 right? AI, whatever. Okay, so if you subscribe to gayism, then yeah, you approve everything. All right, so nobody, no one on earth, no one on earth thinks LGBT is the only right thing to do. And that, like nothing else, okay? It's either you believe in everything, LGBTQI, blah, 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 blah. Or you just believe in one thing, heterosexuality, okay? That is not incestuous, that is not bestial, that is not just, you know, woman, 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 who are not genetically related, okay? And also who are overage, I'm of age, meaning nobody there in one man woman is underage okay so there are a lot of qualification and um limitation of that okay so many rules okay so what is a rule it's like what jesus said talked about this narrow door you have many rules it's like a, a wall all right you have water okay if you just spill water onto the ground, it has this amorphous, this ameba-like shape, right? Right? But if you put it in a cup, then water is, has this shape that looks like a cylinder, right? Cylindrical, whatever this cup shape is. This is more useful this water in a cup that rather than water on the floor that you just spilled you have to wipe it off right but if you put water in your cup you don't wipe it off right you put it there right because it's useful now why because water is not contained okay odor odor disorder Cosmos chaos. Why? Because there's this wall. We are talking about physical world, right? Metaphysically, what is this wall? Rule. Okay? Rule. Like, you have to be straight, you have to be not incestuous, and you have to be not child molesting, okay? And you, in humanology, there is even more rules. A couple more. If you're an ethnic man, you should never uh, marry young, slender, beautiful white woman. Because we need to preserve that beautiful white gene. Because white people are, white race is very vulnerable race. Because it's like white. No matter what color you color it, it becomes that color. Okay, that's why white race is very vulnerable. Okay, so we, we, we need to preserve that. So, I'm an ethnic man too, okay? So, I, I love white girls. Come on, they're beautiful, right? But I, do, I don't, I don't even date. Yeah, I talk to them as a socialist agent, even on online site, online dating site. I talk to them. But I, I never go out and date them, right? Because uh, those young, beautiful, slender white girls, uh, they need to get white men, okay? to preserve the white beauty gene, all right? I care about white race, all right? And um, yeah. And I guess that's very sad when uh, this beautiful, young, slender white girl 
is with some ethnic guys. Oh, that's very disgusting. And I, I, many times I want to kill those, kill that guy. I really want to kill that guy. Okay. Is it out of jealousy? Sure. Doesn't matter. He's he's doing the wrong thing. He's being so selfish. Yeah, well, of course. Every ethnic guy want to have sex with young white slender white girl like that. But he's destroying the white race. Okay, so that's why when I see an ethnic man like Asian, Black, Hispanic, or Arab, Indian guy is with this beautiful, gorgeous, model type, slender, young, white girl. Yeah, I want to kill him. Okay, I feel like that many times. I really want to kill him. Okay. <laughs> but I don't. Okay, because I'm not a criminal. I overcome my inner urges. I have those urges. Why? Because I'm a man. All right. Um, it's okay that you feel these urges. That does not mean you're a bad person. As long as you overcome those urges, then yet you are a good person. Okay. And uh, yeah, I. Nowadays, it doesn't even upset me very much because maybe because I'm aging, I'm 40, I don't have that much energy. Or maybe because uh, I, I just don't, uh, I just got used to seeing all those horrible couples, ugly couples, okay? Yeah, I, I just don't look at them, but uh, yeah, but it, it really, nothing disgusts me more than that, seeing those ugly couples okay you have this ethnic man being so selfish he doesn't care about white race he's actually destroying the white race by having sex with this uh, beautiful slender young white woman okay that's very selfish and nothing disgusts me more than this okay like gay people lesbian people people with t tattoos and piercing they don't disgust me no I just don't like looking at them, but they don't disgust me. But ultra interracialistic couples, if they disgust the hell out of me. Nothing disgusts me more than that, okay? Anyways, it's been 30 minutes. So let's just cool down. Let's take a break. All right.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, I have, I have more energy than other days because uh, I got released from work a little bit early. I mean, not by early means on a regular regular time, like 5.30. That's when I left work today. Um, because, because typically it's like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Because uh, I'm new to the job, so I have a lot to catch up. So, But today I got released earlier. Like 5.30, which is no more release time for everyone else. But uh, So yeah, I guess I have more energy. Uh, I ran after work and did some uh, push-ups and sit-ups. And um, yeah, I feel more high energy today. So uh, let's talk more a little bit more about ultra interracialism. Okay, which is this racialism. This racialism is the same race marriage. Okay, intra-racialism, racialism, same thing. Okay, it's not racism. It's about preserving uh, the ethnic purity, okay, <laughs> and ethnic diversity as well. It's about preserving that. That's racialism, intra-racialism. Okay, inter-racialism is about uh, opposite race, different race marrying each other. Human knowledge is not against all interracialism no it is only against the marriage between uh, an ethnic man and non-white man or and um, beautiful young slender fertile white woman that's the only thing the human is opposes okay so because uh, we are interested in preserving the white beautiful white genes okay like but white race is unique in that it, the white race is the only race that has blonde hair and red hair and green eyes and blue eyes and white skin, okay? Pink skin, orange skin, okay? All the other races like Arabs, Middle Easterns, Indians, Native Americans, Pacific Islands, Asians, Blacks, Hispanics, we are all browns, okay? We have brown eyes, and black, brown hair brown skin that's it right okay so it's just the truth okay so yeah we want to pre we want to preserve is it is at, for everybody's interest that we preserve white race okay because they are beautiful okay I'm not saying they are more beautiful I'm saying they are especially beautiful <laughs> come on man they are beautiful yeah, don't get jealous I'm not white either okay there's no need to be jealous just appreciate it okay I mean, who has blue eyes? Okay, it's only white race people. Okay, who have green eyes? Who have gray eyes? Who have white, purely white skin? It's beautiful. Okay, so appreciate that. Okay, I'm not saying other races are ugly. I'm saying white race is very beautiful. Okay, I mean, it's worthwhile to preserve. That's what I'm saying. All right. So. Now it's getting a little bit cold, so let me pull up some blankets and um, nightcaps and uh, scarf and winter slippers. Oh boy. So, do I have some, does human analogist stance of this anti-ultra interracialism, does it, have some, does it have some biblical backing? I say we do, <laughs> okay. You, you know, if, we, if, I, if this argument make you angry, uh, don't take it seriously, okay, just laugh it off, just think this is some stupid uh, sit down lazy guy, lazy man lonely man uh, in Alaska's vodka drunken uh, rambling comedy but I do want you to keep watching okay uh, just just don't take it seriously okay 
or think of this as some kind of fiction, alright? Or some stupid man's stupid idea, okay? It doesn't matter, okay? No matter who you are, I love you. <laughs> no, matter who, no matter who you are, you should love me too, okay? If you don't love me, I will make you love me. You have to love me, okay? And, uh... Because I want to be the president of the United States in 2020, okay? <laughs> I want you to vote for me. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, in Bible, basically, uh, God created all these animals, and then he created human beings, and God said, all these animals and plants, I'm going to give it to you, you human being. So you take care of the animals and plants, because they are inferior to you, so... Uh, yeah, it's like concept of stewardship of all the nature and environment and so yeah, we should take care of the environment and animal, animal species, the diversity thereof. And then we look at the race, human race, different races. Let's take care of different races, the diversity of races, okay? Let's preserve and protect authenticity and tradition and their uniqueness their genuineness. Yeah, let's preserve and protect the diversity of human race. What's wrong with that? Huh? Think about it. Don't just get angry. Human allergy is all about rationality, okay? There's no room for emotion here. Alright? Because human allergy is, is a study, it's a di discipline. Alright? It's an academic thing. So, don't get angry. Okay. No need, no need to get angry. Just don't take a shot. Just drink vodka slowly. Unless you are pregnant. Unless you have some medical issue. And I hope you are watching this at home. So that you can drink with me. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we take care of uh, different races, okay, and then um, like a stewardship. And then in, uh, later on in the Old Testament, um, they forbid, uh, God forbid, uh, the children of Israel marrying other Gentiles and heathen, heathens, okay. So they want to keep it pure, pure bloodline. Okay, so yeah, there's a, that's another second backing, second support for anti ultra internationalism. Third one is this. Uh, it's kind of you may you may think it's a far fetched argument, but I don't think so. Okay, so when um, there's this offering to God. Okay, they slaughter a lamb and lamb without any blemish, any without any spots, just pure. The most single beautiful lamb is sacrificed to God. Okay, so the way I interpret, okay, not I, the way humanology interprets this uh, part of Old Testament is this: if there's very beautiful white woman. She's slender, she's pretty, she, she has pretty face, she's young, she's fertile, no genetic diseases, no STDs. Then, yeah, she should be, she should get married, a very good white man without any birth defect. She, he's not cross-eyed, he's not, doesn't have any genetic or STD diseases, and he's capable good man, he's not a criminal, he's good man, capable man, he makes good money. Yeah, she should get that man and keep producing beautiful white babies, okay? Yeah, so that's the concept, okay? So being sacrificed to God is like uh, doing the right thing, righteous thing, you know, you 
get married and uh, make beautiful white babies. And that's a lot of sacrifice. To make babies, to be a parent, that's a lot of sacrifice. And what do you sacrifice for? Preservation of beautiful white race, okay? So am I a white supremacist? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm a supremacist of every race. I'm a black supremacist, Asian supremacist, Hispanic supremacist, Middle Eastern supremacist. I, supp I believe every race is supreme in some different ways, okay? They're all beautiful, okay? And people with mixed race, they are beautiful too. Many of them are my friends. I'm not saying they are ugly. No, of course not. Some of the most beautiful people I've ever met are mixed race. Okay? All I'm saying is... Let's say there's this white woman who is not that beautiful. Maybe she's obese. Maybe she's, uh, she's just not pretty. Yeah, then I think it's okay for her to marry an ethnic man. Although it's not recommended. I think it's allowed. Yeah, we can give some room for an exception, okay? But the most beautiful white woman, like a model type, slender, she's young, she's fertile, then yeah, she should get a white man, okay? Why? Because that kind of beautiful girl is, any girl to man is like a drug, okay? Sex is very much like a drug. It gets you high, okay? So... What happened to Tiger Woods? He became a sex addict, right? He married this blonde model and it, it ruined his career, it derailed his career and then he became a sex addict and then he kept cheating on his wife. Okay. It's bad for him, okay? It's just too much. Young, beautiful white girl, it's just too much for an ethnic man. Why is, it, is she not too much for a white man? Because she, he's white too. He grew up with white people. He grew up with uh, beautiful white women. And so when he marries a beautiful white woman, it's, it's not something new to him. He's used to it. So he doesn't get too much pleasure when he has sex with this beautiful white girl. It kind of, she kind of reminds him, reminds me him of his mother, his sister, his aunt. So it's not that fun for a white man to have sex with a white woman. It's not that fun. But for an ethnic man to have sex with a beautiful young white woman, it gives him too much pleasure and that's dangerous. It's a very, very strong drug. That's why it kills him. Okay? Just like Bruce Lee, okay, because he married a very beautiful white, young white girl. It exhausts him. It sucks out all his energy. That's why he, that's my theory of Bruce Lee died young. Um, so that's copium, okay. Copium is this life energy, okay, and when there is a very beautiful girl, whether it's Asian girl or black girl or white girl, it doesn't matter. If somebody's really Hispanic girl, Arab girl, I've seen them all, okay? If there's somebody very beautiful, I try to avoid them because uh, just by looking at them, it's like uh, it consumes too much energy, okay? So I, I kind of avoid looking at them. It consumes too much energy. I, I want to preserve my energy. Okay, it's like Medusa in the Greek mythology. Okay, it turns you into a stone, right? Medusa used to be a very beautiful woman, right? So it's kind of like that. Okay, so uh, also I want to dis maintain my discipline level. Okay, so I don't want to be too happy. Beauty kind of spoils me. You know. So yeah, my ba my first instinct is that uh, I avoid extreme pleasure. But when I watch pornography, yeah, it's always the most beautiful white girl when I watch pornography. Why? Because I'm not 
watching her face to face, but it's on uh, my uh, internet computer screen. So, so it's not that strong. Because I'm not having sex with her. No, I'm just watching her in a pornography, in her internet. Again, this ser whole series is not, may not be app, uh, good for, I mean, suitable for young children, okay? I get plenty of warning, so, um, yeah, uh, I'm feeling a little bit of headache, okay, so let me take some, let's take an early break, okay, I'm gonna take some ibuprofen and uh, we'll, we'll be back, ah, getting old, man, I'm getting old, Ugh. head headache. Okay, people, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So, let's stop talking about anti ultra insurrectionism, okay? Um, let's talk more about um, other things. We have. We have what, is, what does PO mean? Uh, pollution, okay. And the subjectivity, objectivity, mathematics. We did mathematics, we can wipe this out. Truth? Yeah. We kind of talked about this. OK. 
Okay, so let's move on, all right? It's been all one hour already. So, uh, okay. Okay, about this. We talked about copium channel, right? So this is copium channel. And what is a channel? You have this wall. Okay, aqueduct, conduit, wall. Okay, and water go through it. Okay, so, and there's some optical resistance, right? Wall can be thought as a res resistance of the infinite value. Okay, infinite, infinity resistance. Okay, or some uh, insurmountable resistance. Okay, of course you can drill a hole, right? And make a new channel, brand new channel here. Okay, so that water, water can go through like this, right? That's the kind of thing we, we are doing with humanology here, okay? So there is no such a thing as humanology yet. We are making it. We are pioneers. We are making, it's like, are you a hiker? If you're a hiker, uh, maybe sometimes if you're like me, you want to go off the trail. Like Robert Frost, the great American poet. He said, you know, I went off the trail and it made all the difference. So he was making a brand new hiking trail. <laughs> oh, this uh, wood, wooded, wooded area, okay? So, um, sometimes I do that, okay? Mostly when I want to cut through, making, trying to make it quick back to my parking gar parking lot where I, my where my car is parked yeah sometimes i cut through the woods to get to go home faster quicker okay yeah the cutting the corners okay sometimes i do that and all my, all my clothing gets messy with all this vegetation this uh velcro kind of uh you know, people, some guy invented Velcro out of uh, this plant seeds that's sticking to his clothing, that kind of stuff, okay? And I get all this spider, and, oh, horrible. Have you ever had this experience where uh, the spider web you went through with your face and you can hear the spider web, web like ripping right next to your ear? Oh, it's horrible. Part of living in Alaska, I guess, but uh, or anywhere. If you're a hiker, okay. So, yeah, pioneer. We are trying to make this copium channel, this trail, but it's all wooded area of this nothingness or ignorance. Or, okay, we are making a channel through it. Okay, that's what we are doing here. So you and I are pioneers of humanology, okay? So congratulations, okay? <laughs> All right, okay, we, we did enough of that stuff, okay? Oh my goodness, I just erased my agenda. I have no idea what they were. We have subjectivity, objectivity, and pollution, yeah, it's opposite order, but okay, let's talk about subjectivity and objectivity. Uh, mathematically, humanologically, is this subjectivity is nothing but average, average of oh, what am I doing? Objectivity is nothing but average of subjectivity which is equal to sigma you know summation i equal to one to n uh subjectivity of i over n which means n over subjectivity one plus subjectivity two plus blah 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 plus subjectivity of n okay For example, gay marriage. What else, right? 
<laughs> it's one of my favorite topic, right? It used to be something very unpopular. So objectivity about gay homosexuality back in the uh, 1980s, even 1990s when George W. Bush Jr. was in power, was very negative. So objective, objective opinion about homosexuality was something negative, all right? Of course, back in those days, yeah, there were some pro-gayists who advocate for gay rights and whatnot, but they were minority, okay? That was, we are talking about 1990s, which was like three decades ago, okay? Now, things have changed, as you can see. So, in human space, individual dots are people, okay? There are this pro-gayism, and it, it, kept, it kept on expanding. More and more people become pro-gayists, who used to be either neutral or anti-gayists. You have pro-gayists, you have anti-gayists, and there's just, the rest of them are just neutral, right? In this American society, or Western society, pro-gayists kept on exp expanding, meaning more and more people become pro-gayists and leave anti-gayists. Gayism. So anti the group of anti-gayism is a set with some rules. You are anti-gayist, that mean, means you are against gay homosexuality. You're pro-gayist, the rule is you are for in favor of gayism. Okay. Anti-gayism uh, group, the set start uh, kept on shrinking and pro-gayist set kept on uh, expanding, okay, over time. So it's a dynamic set theory. The set, it shrinks or expands, or sometimes they intersect over time. So dynamic set theory is traditional static set theory plus time, okay? So dynamic set theory equals static set theory plus time, okay? We talk about some this set devouring another set over time and making it a, into a subset. Okay, that's dynamic set, set theory. It's something new. Okay, but in human analogy, it is very important. Okay, so yeah, these two set never merges. Okay, because they they are uh, anti. It's kind of matter and anti matter. They can never merge, but. People can migrate out of this, emigrate and then immigrate into this, okay? So yeah, it shrinks and it expands, okay? Yeah, this guy used to be here, but it can swallow up, this set can swallow up and it can, or this guy just, get, just can cross the border and get into this progress set, okay? Anti-gays become neutral and then become progress or whatever, right? Yeah, so It's very interesting, isn't it? Okay Human knowledge is fun, okay? It's not boring All right So objectivity is nothing but average of uh, subjectivity, okay, so it depends on how many people subscribe to anti-gayism or pro-gayism, okay, in this example. So that's why objectivity is not a, some truth, no. It's a changing thing. It's not absolute, okay. Objectivity is nothing but mainstream, majoritarian view, majority. That's what objectivity means. Because I'm an anti-guest, probably the one last anti-guest in America. Okay. Yeah, there are some people who are against gay marriage even nowadays in America, other than me. 
I've seen them, all right? But they're extreme minority now, okay? So, uh, but objectively, the majority of Americans, probably even majority of Christians, and majority of Republicans, uh, probably support gay marriage and transgender surgery. Even their children and their grandchildren, they probably will support them, young kids, declaring themselves as gay or going through transgender hormone therapy or transgender surgery even. They probably approve that, even if they are Christians and they are Republicans. Okay, so because that's more mainstream, that's objective view, objective view. Okay, and that's how far America has come to from its past traditional America. So America has changed a lot. Okay, and uh, it's not just Barack Obama and this uh, Justice Kennedy. No, it's. Justice Kennedy and Barack Obama started to support gay marriage because it is becoming mainstream. They just rolled on top of that huge uh, tide, tidal wave. They're just surfers, okay, for their own political gain and political advantage. They're like politicians. Judges, justices, they, they are very political, okay. So they are not like politically neutral. No, it's never, it's never been that way. All the way back in Justice Marshall's day, okay, um, Justice John Marshall, you know, who introduced this judicial review doctrine, and I think something very horrible. And it's not just me. Justice Thomas, Justice Scalia, they were all against it. Okay, yeah, judicial review. What is it? It's basically saying um, just the judicial, the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court is the king, is the dictator. That's judicial review doctrine. It doesn't matter whatever executive order that the president of the United States come up with, we can always declare it unconstitutional. No matter what st federal statute that Congress come up with, we, the Supreme Court, can always declare it unconstitutional. Okay, we can overturn it, we can leave, okay? No matter what state legislature of all 50 states or what whatever governor makes some order, state legislature come up with state laws, we can always declare it unconstitutional. Why? Because the United States Supreme Court is the king, is the dictator, the supreme law of the America. Okay, that's judicial review doctrine by uh, Justice John Marshall that all the law students admire and kneel down to and bow down to, like Justice Marshall is God. Okay, yeah, I think it's something very un American and undemocratic. I think it's something that Constitution tried to prevent. Constitution is designed to prevent dictatorship and Guess what? Supreme Court is doing just that. Okay. Oh, we have this supreme authority of interpreting the Constitution. But guess what? Constitution was mostly written by uh, James Madison, the president, James Madison. And he was now not a lawyer. Okay. He never went to a law school. Maybe he took some law classes, but he was never a lawyer. So if we talked about this before, okay? So you don't have to be a lawyer. Basically, constitution, constitution was written by a non-lawyer, so which means you don't have to be a lawyer to interpret constitution, okay? But Justice John Marshall hijacked constitution, just like Philistines back in the days in the Old Testament hijacked the tabernacle, the uh, Ten Commandments of Moses in this tabernacle. Yeah. So yeah, the Constitution was hijacked by the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court, okay? 
is sad. So I'm trying to tell you, America is not that much better than North Korea. Okay, we are living in a dictatorship by Supreme Court by. Ideology of gay marriage, ideology of marijuana, because nobody want to talk, talk against them. They are afraid. They are living in fear. <laughs> That's America. We are not talking about North Korea. We are talking about America. It's just like North Korea, okay? We are afraid to talk our minds. There is no freedom of speech in America. No. You don't want to lose your job. You don't want to lose your reputation. So you're living in fear. That's why nobody talks against gay marriage, against transgender bathroom, against marijuana, against tattoos and piercings. I'm the only guy who talks against who, who talks against all those things. Why? I have nothing to lose. I love my job. I love my uh, superiors, my colleagues at work. Okay. To me, it is acceptable that I even die tomorrow as long as I live today in a righteous way. The best possible righteous way I can. All right? I have no regret dying tomorrow. Okay? Am I afraid of losing jobs, my friends, my families? No, I don't. I'm not afraid of that. Okay? I'm not even afraid of my own death. Okay? The only thing I am afraid of is God. That's Christianity. I'm, because I'm Christian, okay? I don't go to churches anymore because, in my opinion, I know better about Bible than pastors in, or preachers or Pope Francis. I know better, in my opinion, okay? There's nothing they can teach me, okay? I have everything to teach them. That's why I'm recording this, okay? To teach people. Of course, nobody's watching this, so nobody's being taught, okay? It's just me drinking vodka and rambling, okay? <laughs> Whatever, okay. So, um, subjectivity, objectivity, we got that, okay. So, let's erase this pollution. All right, then we we'll wrap it up, okay. So, uh, <sighs> come on, man, today is like Tuesday, okay. I work full time, so I need to take a break, take a rest. All right. Go to work at eight o'clock, and I stay until five thirty. Okay. And there was a short day today. Typically, it's like six o'clock or seven o'clock. Okay. So. I think nowadays I work like sixty hours a week, sometimes seventy hours a week, because so sometimes I do work on the weekends. Okay. Voluntary basis. I don't make much money. Okay, so about average American salary that slightly more than uh, what I was making as a computer programmer, okay? Average American salary, because I looked it up, what average American salary is. That's what I'm making, okay? I have no complaint. I don't need money. Money means nothing to me. I'm very Jesusian, Christian, okay? I don't care about money. I just pay, I just want to pay the bills and I know that, then I'm happy, okay? It'd be nice to have a girlfriend, but no girls want me, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but there, there have been a couple of women in my past who have been generous to me. Yeah, they are, God bless them, okay? But it's only because they are generous, okay? Only because they are good people. That's why they dated me, okay? Because they felt sorry. Alright, so. Anyway, <laughs> so what was the last thing we wanted to, pollution, okay, okay. There's this concept of rainbow, all right? And there's this concept of gayism, okay? All right. So, there are people who love rainbows. They are pro-rainbowist, pro-rainbowism. All right, you're gonna like it. You're gonna like this. It's fun. Rainbow, and there's gayism or pro gayism. They swallowed it. Okay, now rainbowism 
is inside of gayism, the symbol of gayism. They didn't ask for permission. They just took it. It's like theft. Ideolo two ideologies, gayism and rainbowism. All right. Who are the pro rainbowists? Anybody who love rainbows. Back in the 80s, back in the 1950s, it had nothing to do with gayism. But gayism, the ideology, I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about ideological level. Because I don't fight people. Okay, I only fight ideologies. To me, everybody is innocent. They are just victims. Even the worst criminals, they are victims of ideologies. Victims of God. God created, created evil ideologies and God made evil ideologies to swallow up certain unfortunate people. Okay? That's the stance, viewpoint of humanology. Everybody's innocent. Nobody's guilty. Okay? We are just pawns and toys of God. Okay? So, Gayism swallowed up rainbowism. So people who used to be here, some of them got out before it got swallowed up by uh, this gayism. Okay, so now they don't love rainbow anymore. They used to love rainbow, rainbow when it had nothing to do with gayism. Now they're outliers. They don't love rainbow anymore because they don't like gayism. Now it's rainbow is associated. It's being swallowed up. It has been swallowed up by gayism. Okay. So this is the power of dynamic set theory. Okay, like these two sets in Venn diagram, they kind of move around over time, right? They become large and smaller and the elements of this set gets out or get in. Very interesting, fascinating story, right? But it's something new. Okay. Yeah, so that's about it, okay? Um, so, because in the back in the Old Testament, uh, I know Bible inside and out because I read it three times. Once in Old Korean, so you have Old English and New Contemporary Modern English, right? Korean same way, same way in every every language. There's Old Korean and New Modern Contemporary Korean. So I read Bible once in the Old Korean, and then second time New Korean language and third time I read Bible in King James kind of old English okay so I read Bible three times so I know inside and out so somewhere in the Old Testament there is this talk about uh, oh this idolatry they uh, on on every top of the mountain high high mountain on top of mountains they worship idols Okay. What is the what what is the analogy? How do we interpret this in a contemporary world? How do we map this like one to one mapping, correspondence in the mathematical language, function theory? Okay. So on top of mountains, yeah, they used to worship idols. You know, uh, lascivious, lewd, adulterous way. That's what that's the biblical Old Testament language. Okay. Because God didn't like what he was seeing. People on top of mountains, they worship idols, foreign gods. And God was very angry at that. Now, on top of mountain, it's like this. You have politicians like Donald J. Trump or governors, U.S. senators, U.S. congressmen. That's politics, right? And then you have Hollywood. All this Lady Gaga, Katy Perry. All these big name Hollywood actors, singers, and you have academia. All the Harvard professors, MIT, Stanford professors, Princeton, Yale professors, they all worship gay marriage. 
they all worship marijuana. They all worship and kneel down and bow down to tattoos, piercings. They take picture with them. Gays, transgenders, marijuana, tattoos, piercings. Yeah, they take picture with those people and they uh, worship them in public and all this high high journalism, right? All this Washington State, oh, no, no, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post. They worship gay marriage, transgender bathroom, tattoos, piercing, marijuana. They worship them, okay? They kneel down, buy down to just mainstream evils in the eyes of humanology, okay? They just bow down, kneel down, kiss ass, boot, lick boots, okay? That's what they do. And that's how they have when reached, went to this top of the mountain by sucking up to the mainstream, doing the homework, obeying. They obey the ma majority, they obey the majority and they go along with the majority, whether they are wrong or right, they don't care. They always go with the majority mainstream that's how they became this elite on top of the mountain in every single sector okay they just went along with the majoritarian view mainstream if you don't do that you're down here like you and me okay because you resist against the majoritarian view you are an outlier, you are a minority. You never can get to the top of the mountain. And Jesus knew about this. That's why he said, uh, you cannot serve two masters. So either you hate one and love one, or you love the other and hate one, whatever, okay? And Jesus said, this is the punchline. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. What is Mammon? Money, power, and fame. We have Wall Street Journal, we have New York Times, you have Washington Post, you have President Obama, President Donald J. Trump. Okay, you have, uh, what was age sample? Hollywood. You have Lady Gaga, Katy Perry. Okay, and you have, uh, what is, academia. You have Harvard, MIT, Stanford. Okay, they all sell out, okay? <laughs> Maybe not all of them, okay? Maybe some, there are some good people in Stanford or Harvard or Yale. Actually, yeah, they, I've seen some great people who graduated from Harvard and Stanford. And some of them are my friends too, okay? Okay, so you went to those schools. I'm not saying you are a bad person. <laughs> Many of my friends went to those schools and graduated, and uh, they're great people, good people, good Samaritans, okay? I'm talking about this, like, uh, acad academics, professors in Harvard, professors in Yale. I'm not saying they're all bad, because I also know some good Harvard, laws prof Harvard professors, Yale professors. I mean, I never met them, but I read I heard and I know some of them are nice people, okay? So but mostly 99% yeah, to get on top of those mountains, yeah, you have to sell out. Okay? That's why you and me who refuse to sell out, who refuse to compromise our moral integrity, we are we are at the bottom. Okay? We are the fringe elements. We are minorities. Perhaps silent minorities, or silent majority, whatever. Because elites are minority, okay? There are very few elites. But they got all the power, okay? I'm not advocating some social revolution or mutiny or some violent socialism, communism. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you, 
this is just how it is. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. Telling you it's the human history. All the way from the get-go. All the way from Book of Genesis. It's been always this way. Okay? That's what I'm saying. What happened to David? King David? What happened to King Solomon? Once they got the power, they became, became very polluted. Corrupted. King Saul. Yeah, he was an innocent, naive guy. Tall guy. King Saul, the very first king of Israel. But once he got the power, he started to get corrupted and polluted. And it's like this always, okay? Throughout the human history, in every single country, in every single culture, it's always like that, okay? The, the single minority elite, very few people, once they get power, they become complacent and uh, they become lazy. And guess what? Even Jesus became complacent and lazy okay what was he doing in the ship when there was a storm he was sleeping okay <laughs> and later on his life in jesus's time he jesus said people were bringing all these sick people like patients oh heal me cure my disease expel my demon jesus said how many how long ago should i stay with you and taking care of your problem. I'm sick and tired of it. Oh Lord, please heal me. Okay, okay. Come on. Okay. Abacadabra, your demon is out of your body. So get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what Jesus said at the later days of his life. Okay. So, and Jesus, uh, again, humanology is not all about religion. Okay. So it's, we are critical thinkers and we critical readers. One criticism that is plausible and possible is this. He lived all this rock star life for three decades of his life and he suffered one day. Okay? The day he died, yeah, he suffered on the cross one day out of 30 times 365 days. So three decades. He suffered one day. Maybe plus 40 days and 40 nights. Maybe plus 40 died. 40 days when he was in the desert and he was fasting and tempted tempted by the devil, Satan. Okay, so he suffered 41 days. The rest of his 30 years of life, he was a rock star, the son of God, okay? He had this miraculous power. He was able to turn the bread, multiply the bread into thousand. He never turned stone into bread. Okay, there's this song, uh, you know, We Are the World. It's written by some stupid guy, I guess. Because the lyrics of We Are The World says uh, Jesus turned the stone into bread. No, he didn't. Fucking stupid idiot wrote that li fucking stupid lyrics, okay? It was the devil that tempted Jesus. Why don't you turn this stone into bread? Because you are the son of God and you are able to do it and you are hungry after these 40 days and 40 nights. It was the temptation of the devil. And this fucking stupid lyricist, whoever wrote that shit, said uh, Jesus turned the stone into bread. No, it was the temptation of the devil. Devil asked, told Jesus to uh, turn the stone into bread. And Jesus refused. Okay, so whoever wrote that shit is a fucking idiot. Okay. You, you want to write about Jesus in your song? At least know. At least know what Jesus did. At least read Bible. Fucking stupid shit. But it's a decent song. Okay, so if you... If somebody wrote that song, We Are The World, well, you are excused, okay? Because it's, a, it's not a great song, but it's a decent song, okay? 
I prefer that song, uh, you know, Do They Know It's Christmas, you know, Feed the World. You know, it was written by these British guys, you know, and uh, We Are the World is kind of imitation version of that, right? But uh, the British song, this, uh, you know, Do They Know It's Christmas. I didn't like that music video, okay? It was kind of um, amateurish kind of thing. But I really like, I like it a lot better of this uh, video production of We Are The World. It was better, okay? The music video, yeah, it was done better. But music itself, yeah. Do they know it's Christmas? That's better music, okay? Than We Are The World. Probably better lyrics too, okay? So, you're excused, okay? If you wrote that lyrics about Jesus turning the st stone into bread, well, you're a fucking Hollywood musician, so I don't expect much of you. So, it's okay that you make some mistakes. So I, I can forgive you. I can forgive you. You're excused, okay? Whatever, man. <laughs> I told you this is stand-up comedy, and it's just entertainment for your entertainment oh, that that's all it is okay so ignore everything i say here okay just forget about it so okay in the old testament okay there's this god said oh you the worshiper of this foreign god idolatry is polluting the earth it's from the old testament pollution of the earth by foreign god idolatry okay now we have this gayism and rainbow okay rainbow it was like you know what is rainbow what does it stand for what did it used to stand for what did it used to symbolize i give you 10 seconds okay Back in the days, in 1950s and 1960s, what did rainbow stand for? Okay, you had your 10 seconds. Way back in the Old Testament, okay, the uh, God created rainbow after Noah's ark, Noah's flood, okay, so. Okay, so in the book of Genesis, uh, at first, there was this Sodom and Gomorrah, all right? And then they were doing all these homosexual things. So God decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham, Lot, lived there. And there were citizens and residents of Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? God told him, told them, I'm going to destroy, to destroy this gay city, Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't get me wrong, I, I love San Francisco. I don't want San Francisco to be destroyed. Okay? I love San, I've been to that city. Beautiful city, okay? I don't want San Francisco to be destroyed, okay? So don't get me wrong, okay? I love that city, I've been there, okay? Beautiful city. So, so the man Gomorrah, uh, God said, uh, oh, this is all homosexual. See the Saddam and Gomorrah, Sodomy, okay? So I'm gonna destroy this city, all right? So Abraham said, just give it some time. Let me find 10 people who are righteous. Then uh, I don't want you to destroy this Saddam and Gomorrah city. God said, okay, I take the deal. And if you can find 10 righteous people, then I'm not gonna destroy Saddam and Gomorrah, okay? And Abraham failed to find 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. So God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And God told Abraham and Lot, get out of there. Because I don't want you to die when Saddam, when I destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? So they got, they got out. Okay? But Lot's wife looked back. And she turned into the pillar of salt. Salt. So, salt pillar okay so 
Genesis in the book of Genesis and the I think Noah's Ark I think it's also in the book of Genesis okay so it didn't take too long before God destroyed the world again okay. <laughs> people get corrupted and polluted so easily okay so Noah yeah God looked down the earth and everybody got corrupted and polluted again they turn evil okay so Noah hey I'm gonna save your family only and I'm gonna kill everybody okay so build an ark and save yourself and your family okay so God killed everyone else all right and later on it happened again and again and again and again okay God looked down on earth and they start worshiping this idolatry like gayism, tattoo piercism, transgenderism, marijuanaism, all this either idolatry to some stupid shit. Ugly things like tattoos, piercings like here, 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 here. And tattoos like here, 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 here. Ugly, stupid, fucking shit. Okay, gayism, like lesbians, this cutting of their breasts and this shaving their hair and walking and talk like a boy. Lesbians and they get together and then uh, stupid people like Ma Ma Madonna and Elton John. They praise gayism like Ellen DeGeneres on top of this journalism Anderson Cooper and President Trump and Hollywood is Lady Gaga and Academia like this this uh, Harvard Yale Princeton and Stanford MIT top professors all praising gay marriage oh yeah stupid shit like that right this has happened before okay this powerful people worshiping idols idolatry okay it's recurrence of okay? eternal recurrence like Friedrich Nietzsche talked about okay it's to all these stupid things it happened again and again and again Adolf Hitler he was elected by Germans and you know we are no different in like North Korea United States of America they're all the same okay Mainstream is always evil. Okay, that's why Jesus said, you know, uh, this world is being dominated by the devil. This world is in control, under the control of the devil. That's what Jesus said. Preachers, pastors, they will never tell you this. So that's why I recommend you to read the Bible yourself. You go to. Uh, dollar store or Bible is very cheap okay well, you just go to internet okay so read the Bible what Jesus said it's all there okay <laughs> yeah so Jesus said this world is dominated by the devil okay so uh, to get there on top of the hill you have to sell out okay you have to obey you are not a leader you are a lady you are being led and once they get on top of the hill, what do they do? They misguide. Why? Because by then, they've been brainwashed. They've been always obeyed and obeyed, obeyed to get all the way to the top. Now, you cannot think on your own because you have obeyed, 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 homework, homework, homework. So you are like a machine. You don't have the backbone. That's Barack Obama, that's Donald J. Trump, that's Supreme Court Justices, that's top professors of top schools, everywhere. Hollywood celebrities, okay? Sellouts, all right? I'm not saying it is wrong or it is right. It's been always this way since the beginning, okay? I'm not talking about revolution or 
human allergy is against violence. Okay, so don't, don't get me wrong, because violence is not going to change anything. We went through communism and socialism, Marxism. It's against, it's all about violent revolution. Did it change the world? No. Lenin, Stalin, North Korean leader, or Cuba, Fidel Castro, or Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao. Yeah, they did all this violent revolution, right? They became the king, okay? What do they do? They get fat, this pot belly, they are the richest people in the country. Nothing changed, okay? They're like CEOs of this big corporation of America. This Stalin, Lenin, Fidel Castro, fat cats. So this Bernie Sanders that he talks about socialism. Don't be stupid, okay? Don't, don't be naive. Do you think he's gonna change anything? No. Socialism, communism, it doesn't change this fixed pattern, okay? It's, you get the power, you get rich, you get this pot belly, you become a fat cat. Socialism, communism, capitalism, they're all the same, okay? CEOs and Lenin's, Lenin, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao, and this uh, Fidel Castro or North Korean leaders, all the same, okay? President Trump, President Obama, all the same, okay? If you are top of the hill, all you care is holding on to your power, okay? You want your money, you want your sex, you want your women, and like Matt Lauer or Harvey Weinstein, Donald J. Trump, they're all the same, okay? You, you want power, more money, more power. Look at President, ex-President Barack Obama, okay? People are dying in the streets of Chicago left and right, okay? President Obama, ex-former President Obama, uh, he has all the power, money, influence, networks. Yeah, he could have used his time to reduce the crime in Chicago, his hometown, where he lives now. What does he do? He's spending money to build his own library. President Obama's memorial library or Obama Center, his namesake. That's all, what, all he cares about. He doesn't care about some ghettos and inner city and Chicago and people who have been killed and murdered. He doesn't care. All he cares about is his name, Obama Library, okay? He doesn't care about other people dying in his own hometown. Do you think Donald J. Trump is any different? Do you think George W. Bush is different? Do you think Bill Clinton is different? No, no, they're all the same people, okay? They're on top of the hill. To get there, they had to sell out, okay? Obey, 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 homework, homework, homework. Yeah, They're, it's not just them, it's all throughout the human history in every single culture and every single community, countries in Asia, Europe, Africa, India, Middle East, it's been always that way, okay? So, yeah, so pollution in the Old Testament somewhere, God said, uh, all this idolatry polluted the earth. Now, deism is polluting the earth. It polluted rainbow. Rainbow used to be the symbol of innocence, promise, you know, Noah's Ark. So the flood, the high sea level went down and God created rainbow. Okay, this is my, uh, token of appreciation of your Noah's blood. Um, this is the evidence that uh, my 
covenant that uh, I will never cause this great flood again on earth. Rainbow, symbol of hope, symbol of innocence. Like somewhere over the rainbow in uh, Wizard of Oz, children used to love rainbows, like Skittles, okay? Then this co there comes this gayism and it swallowed rainbow. Now, nobody can think of rainbow or sees the rainbow without thinking gay, male gay, anal sex. So this male gay, again, you have to know this. This material, this whole 40 episodes of this humanology series, is, it may not be appropriate for uh, underage people, okay? so. But we have to do this though, because uh, humanology is about people, okay? So it contains children and also adults, okay? So we have to do this, okay? So uh, if you are underage, if your parents are underage, yeah, you can stop here, okay? But, uh, okay? So now I'm gonna talk some adult stuff, okay? All right. So, okay. Rainbow used to be a symbolism of uh, all this innocence, childhood, and over the, somewhere over the rainbow, this hope, dream, and promise of the future. It used to be something very beautiful, okay? Then, then this evil gayism, not people, ideology, okay? Gayism is swallowed up, this rainbowism, okay? So now, when people in the West look at get rainbow, they cannot dissociate dissociate rainbow and gayism. Okay, rainbowism and gayism. Okay, whenever people see the rainbow, the first thing first thing in their mind that comes to mind is a male gay male inserting his erected penis into another man's anus, the male gay sex. Or this lesbian with the shaved hair, like short hair, like Ellen DeGeneres, and cut off breast, surgically removed breast, and this, and this lesbian never put on skirts. She always wear these baggy jeans and she talks and looks and walks like a dude, like a man, lesbian. This lesbian style, I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about lesbian style, the lesbianism, the gayism, okay? Concept level, ideology. Because all the lesbians, they used to be very beautiful women, beautiful girls when they were young. But they have been possessed by this concept, this, uh, ideology of lesbianism created by God, okay? So they're the victims, okay? So I don't blame you, I don't judge you, your innocent people who are just being used by God, okay? So because God wants villains in his movie called Human History. Because without villains, a movie is insipid, boring, okay? He wants villain and he's taking advantage of you. He's making use of you. So, okay. <laughs> so, it sucks to be you, okay? <laughs> sucks to be you. I'm sorry for you, okay? Okay. So, Ellen DeGeneres, this stupid Lady Gaga, is fucking stupid idiot, Katy Perry, okay? So, they're all villains because they're stupid and naive enough to be taken advantage of by the devil who is created and commanded by God, okay? So, these fucking morons, okay? So, yeah. Okay, so, uh, gayism swallowed up rainbowism, okay? Now, rainbow, concept of rainbow is polluted, okay? Rainbow used to be something very beautiful, but now it's polluted, corrupted by this idolatry, 
evil ideology of gay is okay and guess what God he wanted it to be this way why because it's fun okay so God is all all about entertainment okay he's bored by himself so he create started to create all these evil things he's messing with us okay so Nobody on earth, no human being is evil, okay? We are all innocent. Okay? No matter who you are, you may be the worst criminal in the world. Like Adolf Hitler. You are innocent, okay? In the eyes of humanity, you are a victim. Okay? Because God implanted those evil thoughts in you. Adolf Hitler, okay, he, he's not an evil man, no, he's, he's innocent, poor guy, he's just been used by God as a pawn, he's like a mannequin, alright, clueless guy, young guy, Adolf Hitler, I don't want you to be emotional, I want you to be rational, okay, Adolf Hif Hitler, when he was five years old, Okay, he was just like you and me, five in, in our five years old age. He has no control over his destiny or his environment. Okay, so God planted this idea of anti-Semitism in young Adolf Hitler. Okay, when he was five years old boy, he was just like you and me. But God had this conformation, this environment and he started to develop this anti-semitism, okay? He did not control his environment. Can you control your environment? No, no one, no one can. We don't get to choose your country, your time, your year of your birth, the age you are born into. You don't get to control time and space, okay? You are born to your parents. You're born as male. You're born in 1980s. You don't get to control any of that. You don't get to choose your country, your parents, or the time you're born. No. That's why there is no such a thing as free will, okay? So... Adolf Hitler is just like you and me, okay? He did not choose his parents or his country, the time he was born, no. His environment, okay? So, God is the single author, writer, and director, producer of human history. Okay, we are all victims. Victims, okay? God's pawns and toys, okay? So, but there's no use, there's no point of rebelling against God. Why? Right? Because we are all humans. Okay. It's a human condition, okay? In Korean maxim, one of the Korean proverbs is this, okay? You spit again, you spit toward the heaven, toward the sky. You spit your saliva toward the sky. And it comes back down to you. Okay, so there is no point of rebelling against God because he's more powerful than us. God has upper hand over us. Okay? If you rebel against God, no matter how you hate him, no matter how you disagree with him, you're not going to succeed. All right? That's a human condition. We are created by God. God owns us. Okay, so if you rebel against God, God will not be damaged. You will be damaged. Why? Because God is the dictator. Like North Korean dictator or Fidel Castro or Chairman Mao 
اون در مورد ترامپ God is the supreme ruler of the universe You may rebel against him God but uh, you may choose you have free will to choose to rebel against God but the consequence is something you cannot control okay you may say oh okay I'm gay I'm male gay so I want to have sex with all these different guys and of gay and of sex okay that is your free will your free choice okay but you cannot it is something you can control yeah you can control pick and choose all you can choose to have sex with male gays just like you are okay but so consequence that is something you cannot choose okay you will get AIDS if you are male gays if you're a male gay, you will get AIDS in eventually, okay? Because male gays, they don't use condoms, okay? Why? Because they don't get pregnant. We are guys. We don't get pregnant. We are not women, okay? So, and uh, putting on condom, it's just cumbersome, okay? It's too much work. So yeah, you have sex, gay and all sex. And gay anal sex, it leads to bleeding, anal fissure, anal bleeding. So, and you have sex, gay anal sex with a lot of men. Okay, we, we all guys, we, we want to have sex, right? You have sex with many guys and one of them have AIDS and you, you bleed, your anus get this scars and lacerations, so and AIDS virus is in um, sperm, so you get AIDS and you die, okay? My question to you is, did you want to die? Do you want to die? Okay, so that's kind of consequence that you cannot control, okay? Okay, so you have free will, but you, you have choices, but the result, cause and effect, result your future it is not under your control okay so that is why it is the best policy that we obey like it or not the commandments of god the bible okay i have read some bits and parts of upanishad and Rig Veda or Lig Veda, I don't know. Uh, or some Buddhist classics. I've read some Korans, not from cover to cover, but and some Confucius and some Eastern philosophy, Lao Tzu, you know, Monzu, Confucius, some Japanese, okay, some Korean. But to me, in my personal opinion, so I think Bible, is, the Christian Bible is Old Testament, New Testament. I think it's the most perfect ethical lessons. Okay, so yeah, I've been through all this Buddhism, Islam, you know, Confucianism. Yeah, bits and pieces. I explored all that stuff. Okay, shopped around, but. In my opinion, at the age of 40, uh, I think Bible is the best, okay? So, uh, okay, I, I'm going to leave you with that, okay? Okay, bye. Good night. Where is this button? Okay. Yeah, so wh whether you agree with me or not, uh, I'll leave that up to you, okay? Good night.